Could a surge of tropical moisture in the Western Caribbean develop into a tropical disturbance? Your forecast across the Caribbean and the Bahamas starts right now. This is Meteo Mundo. Okay, friends, great to see you again on this Wednesday afternoon. Rusty back here with you at Media Mundo. Thank you so much for tuning in. Coming up in this video, we're going to talk about really nasty storms developing across portions of the area, especially over the greater Antilles here on this Wednesday afternoon. These are high energy storms. Look at all of that lightning. We'll discuss that tropical moisture in the Western Caribbean, the benefits of bringing some better rain chances to areas that desperately need it, but also why I'm going to be watching this area over the week ahead as well. We'll get right into the video. First of all, thank you so much for all the comments in yesterday's video talking about how hot it's been in your area. Most of you saying it's been one of the hottest or the hottest starts to year you've ever seen. And many of you have lived where you live for a long time. Again, we missed some of the monsoon rains. We have yet to see the wet season kick in in some spots. One way to cool off, of course, is to get our daily downpours, and we're seeing more tropical moisture coming into play. But, of course, it's also into hurricane season, so something to monitor as well. Now, look, late in the video, I'm going to get a lot more into what's happening here over Central America. But you can see on our water vapor imagery that broad twist to those areas in green. And, again, the benefits of surging tropical moisture to areas of Central America and the Yucatan that desperately need it. But the first thing I want to start off with here is what's happening here and now. Of course, at Media Mundo, I can show you your live satellite, live radar, and your live lightning data. And friends, look how intense these storms are over the Turks and the Caicos, portions of Hispaniola and Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands and Jamaica. We have our tropical wave moving through. We have this surface trough elongated west to east, and that's really aiding in the lift and the instability. There's a lot of energy. There's a lot of lightning. Boaters, mariners, you want to be in port. These storms, prolific uh, lightning right now over the Turks and Caicos, Hispaniola, Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands, and then we'll get into what's happening in Jamaica right now. So, for my friends in Jamaica, late Last evening, many of you, especially in the Kingston area, talked about some localized flash flooding. Meteorological Service in Jamaica did issue a flash flood warning for the entire island for the low-lying areas through 5 o'clock today. I don't know whether they allowed that to expire early. I have a couple of different uh, ways I can look at the different warnings across the Caribbean. Didn't see that one just before I came on to record this, but hopefully the rain has been a little bit more spotty so far and that flash flooding has gone away. That being said... Still a lot of moisture, still this tropical plume of moisture, still some hefty rain likely in this area the next few days. Right now, you can see those thunderstorms beginning to move into the western side of the island. Montego Bay and Negril, Savannah Lamar, Westmoreland, uh, Hanover Parishes. Again, right now at the hour, look at all of that lightning over the Montego Bay area there, Savannah Lamar. This is all going to be drifting to the south and to the east, right through the heart of the island, maybe close to the Mandeville area. But again, this is just kind of the snapshot of what's happening at the present time. Additional showers and storms are likely for the next several days. So still the potential for more flash flooding. If you live in Jamaica, let me know what you've been seeing. And again, still some moisture off towards the west. It has been relatively dry today in the Cayman Islands. In general, the farther east that you go, the storms are just more prolific. Eastern Cuba, Hispaniola, the Turks and the Caicos. Look at all of this lightning. Look how inundated we are with this heavy rain. And again, it's coming down right now. Puerto Plata, San Diego, de los Caballeros, even towards Port-au-Prince, Santo Domingo, Punta Cana, up towards the Turks and Caicos, Cockburn Town, and Matthew Town. Again, heavy rain, lightning going along with the story. We've had some really nasty storms over the Mona Passage. Storms that developed over Puerto Rico now lifting to the north, producing special marine warnings. And then some pretty nasty weather at this point in time over places like St. Thomas and St. John. So again, this is the kind of last look at the satellite data here. Let me get it to right to the current. Look at that blow up right over places like Culebra, St. Thomas, St. John, Roadtown, Tortola area there as well. So nasty storms there, very heavy rain, at least some isolated activity over St. Croix. That's the satellite data. But of course, I can also show you the live radar data as well. So let's move over to the Puerto Rico radar live look. Again, the island, there's not much in the way of rain at this point in time. Towards Fajardo, yes. And again, Culebra and Vieques. And you can see how covered up St. Thomas and St. John and Tortola are right now. Scattered showers over St. Croix. But again, hefty 
rain, a lot of lightning, the potential for more flash flooding in some spots. And again, in these areas, the heating of the day is gonna promote more widespread and heavier rain. So relatively quiet in the mornings, but over the next couple of afternoons, storms are more than likely going to flare up again. Now you get as far east as the Northern Leeward Islands at places like Anguilla, St. Martin, St. Bartholomew, Saba, close enough where you can still have some passing downpours. I'm not worried about any flash flooding. And I mentioned it in yesterday's video. Now that our tropical wave is moving to the west, the Leeward Islands will begin to dry out. And again, just kind of going down the island chain, Barbuda, Antigua, Montserrat, Guadalupe, Dominica, Martinique, St. Lucia, St. Vincent, the Grenadines, Barbados, Grenada, basically dry for today. I've seen a couple of showers trying to develop on the western sides of Trinidad. Tobago could also see a brief shower, but generally speaking, the tropical wave has actually dropped south and west into South America. Places like Suriname and Venezuela and Guyana with a better chance for showers there. Let's get back on over to the ABC Islands. I'll hit the right button where it's basically dry here. Hot, and dry for Aruba, Bonaire, and Curacao. Now over to Honduras and Belize and the Yucatan. And again, we're seeing this tropical moisture begin to sweep into the area. This is great news for the areas desperately needing some rain. Nice thunderstorms had developed in the northern sides of Honduras this afternoon, La Chiba, near San Pedro Sula, Roatan, even a brief shower in far southeast Belize for today. But again, this is just the first kind of day. We're going to get this moisture moving deeper into your area, and we'll look at that coming up. Still dry for the Yucatan, but again, better opportunities here over the next several days. Scattered showers have been playing out over the north northwest Bahamas over the last several hours here. Again, I'm going to get off the satellite data, bring on the uh, radar data here. And let me drop down this loop to just the last three hours or so. First of all, these showers, if, where did the radar go? There it is. First of all, these showers are, again, very isolated in nature. But that being said, when they get going, heavy rain and lightning and even some small hail are possible. Nice little storm over Grand Bahama drifting to the north, but some of that has swept back over High Rock. We've seen a couple of showers over portions of Abaco. Nice little lightning there. You can see over Marsh Harbor at least a little bit of rain, but again, it's, it's pretty isolated in nature. It's a little bit more prominent right now in New Providence. Watch this storm flare up right over New Providence, the Nassau area here in the last half hour or so. Fair amount of lightning. It's coming back down already, but you know places like Cable Beach and Old Fort Bay and Paradise Island all got some showers today with a little bit of lightning to go along with that. Andros, again, scattered storms, central and the northern sides of the island there. Seen a couple more showers trying to sneak over towards Eleuthera, uh, but again, not a lot in the way of some rain there. But as you get south and east, Again, look at all of the lightning there. Once again, it is the central and the southeast sides of the Bahamas where we have the heftiest, most prolific rain. So that's what's happening now. There's obviously gonna be some strong winds coming up with some of these storms, so keep that in mind. Again, boaters, you wanna be indoors when you got all this lightning going on. So now we're gonna get into the models and we're gonna take a look at, first of all, what's gonna be happening over the next five days. Then we'll get into the extended forecast for the Western Caribbean. I've got your island by island rain outlook coming up as well. As we get into the models, first of all, thank you so much for liking this video. If you have not subscribed here to Media Mundo as of yet, click that subscribe button right now. Thank you for all the support as well via the super thanks and the other ways to support the channel in the description below. I appreciate you all doing that as well, but of course, liking and subscribing helps us out tremendously as well. So you're looking at the GFS model. I also wanted to show you the NAM model, but unfortunately the NAM model is not doing very well this afternoon. It's kind of hiccuping, so I can't show you that, but I'll break down what the GFS is showing, what I agree with, what I don't agree with, and then we'll get into the extended forecast as well. So the first thing I wanna talk about is what's gonna be happening for the Greater Antilles over the next several days. Again, we've already mentioned some of the heftier uh, potential rain, especially in the afternoon hours. Now, the GFS, in my opinion, is underdoing what we're going to see in places like the Dominican Republic and Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands. It doesn't show enough rain. The NAM model, was much wetter when I looked at it earlier today. Again, I wish I could show it to you right now. It just isn't showing up on my display. But I do expect high rain chances to continue the next few afternoons for places like Santo Domingo and San Juan. Now, I believe the GFS is doing well with the storms over the Turks and the Caicos 
and Jamaica, and in general, what's going to be happening in the northwest sides of the Caribbean, where again, this surge of tropical moisture will be coming in. Pretty much every model picks up on that. It's just whether it tries to spin up anything to go along with this moisture coming in. The GFS is one of the more aggressive models. But again, if nothing else, we're going to get more wind energy. We're going to get more tropical moisture coming into this areas and better rain chances as well. Now, our eastern areas will be drying out a bit. Sure, there's more tropical waves to discuss in the longer term, but over the next three days, from Anguilla all the way down towards Trinidad and Tobago, it will be getting drier. Slightly better chance for rain on the northern side of the Leeward Islands, but for our friends here, don't expect a lot of rain. Same thing for the ABC Islands. So now let's focus in on what's going to be happening in these areas. And again, places like Nicaragua and Honduras and Belize and the Yucatan, desperate for some of these showers. So let's go day by day here. So I'm going to pause this. Again, for the remainder of this Wednesday, Honduras certainly going to get some scattered showers. Belize, probably not much. Tomorrow, it's about the same situation. But again, we're just kind of building on each and every day. Where first of all, I hope the rain becomes more widespread and then it becomes heavier in nature as that deeper pool of tropical moisture moves into this area. So by the time we get into Friday, we can start to see more rain developing farther north and, rest, north and west. And again, it's not drought busting rain in one day, but these could be some decent downpours over Belize and Guatemala and Honduras, and as far north as the northern tip of the Yucatan as well. And then as we get into the weekend, you can see that this moisture sticks around. It's just nice to be talking about better rain chances, okay? Uh, you know, it's not a slam dunk, right? I'm not gonna say we're done with any issues here, but for the first time in a long time, we're talking about some good rain chances in these areas starting on Friday, at least through the early part of next week. And again, depending on the model, and we'll get into the more extended forecast, how long some of this moisture could be sticking around. But you can see it gets wet for the Cayman Islands, it stays wet for the Turks and Caicos and the Southeast Bahamas, and then scattered rain over portions of the Bahamas as well. So that's what the rainfall looks like over the next several days. Let's go island by island right now. Jamaica, again, your rain chances are going to stay high. And Jamaica, did I get into your forecast? I might not have, hang on a second. I wanna make sure I get back into this as well. I apologize here. I know we talked about what's happening here and now. Uh, you guys stay in this moisture plume where rain chances remain high. Now, again, it's very area dependent. It's hard to pinpoint any potential flash flooding, but high rain chances, as you can see in the extended forecast over the next five days, where we're gonna stay in that 80% chance for rain almost each and every day. And I believe I covered everyone else. So I just wanted to make sure I covered that. I kind of spun right around you guys and I apologize. So here we go, 80% chance of rain in Jamaica all the way through Friday. The Bahamas, again, lower north and west, but still intense storms where they develop. Better chances south and east. Overall, about a 40% chance tomorrow and Friday. Turks and Caicos, again, uh, scattered in nature, but just like today, man, they can get really nasty. And overall, your coverage goes up again on Friday. The Dominican Republic stays with a high rain chance. Cayman Islands will really start to see improving rain chances. It's great to talk about a 40% chance for showers in Belize City Thursday and Friday. Now, the rain on Thursday tomorrow may not be very heavy, but we could get into more tropical downpours starting on Friday. And even Cancun and Cosmo will start to get into a bit of a rain chance as well. Puerto Rico, your rain chances are again highest the next couple days. They do begin to fade starting on Friday. The GFS is just a little too dry early in the period, but it is picking up on the drier air coming in to Puerto Rico and then areas off towards the east. So the U.S. and British Virgin Islands will also see their rain chances tail. But again, in the afternoon hours, even if it's just a 40% chance, there could be some really heavy rain and a lot of lightning. Antigua and Barbuda's uh, rain chance goes down as well. And again, places like Guadalupe and Barbados and Trinidad, Tobago and the ABC Islands, the rain chances overall will be a little bit lower here over the next several days. Okay, let's go back over to uh, what's gonna be happening here. I've got a rundown. I wanna make sure I cover everything. So we looked at the rainfall over the next five days. Let's switch over here to our Vorticity product. So now we're gonna focus in on, well, I tell you what, the first thing I wanna do actually 
is I'm gonna bring back on this satellite data because there's a lot of different things I can look at here, guys. And this is what I love to do behind the scenes, okay? So this is our visible satellite imagery. And there's a lot of cool things I can show you here. First of all, we have a big blow up of storms in the Eastern Pacific. If you guys notice this right here, we have a bit of outflow. There's a very broad circulation. It's right over uh, Nicaragua right now, okay? You can see the storms developing over Costa Rica. So uh, a couple different things I can show you here. This is a really cool product, actually. This is a very high resolution, visible satellite imagery and infrared imagery. And again, I look at all of these different things here and we can just see the different striations and a little bit of a twist here. So again, very high resolution product here. Uh, let's see here, water vapor imagery, which is a differential one. So I can look at this and see where the moisture content is a little bit higher. We're deep diving right now, but I love to do this when we have a system like this. And maybe you haven't seen this uh, anywhere else as well. So I, I just like to kind of get into the weeds from time to time. But again, that satellite imagery, that's the visible satellite imagery. I'll go back over to our single band here, go to the upper, upper uh, levels. Again, very just clear to see more moisture content in this area. So how is this gonna play out? Now I wanna get back over to the model. So we take the what's happening here and now, we swing back over to the GFS model, and we look at the vorticity or the spin in the atmosphere. Again, this is not at the surface, but it is at the lower levels of the atmosphere. Earlier in the day when the name was cooperating, uh, it was very much similar where there is this broad twist, okay, right over Central America in the Yucatan. Again, not necessarily becoming a tropical disturbance, at least as of yet, but that will enhance the tropical moisture that'll be surging into this area. That is the benefit of seeing this moving in areas that are desperate for some rain. That's just in the next five days. If I extend this out a little bit longer in time here, we'll get a better idea of what the GFS is trying to do in general with this area. So I'm gonna let this run a few more days here. There's, a, first of all, a couple of things, okay? Overall, it does look like the Western Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico just get more active in general over the next 10 days or so, okay? The tropical moisture, this broad spin, if nothing else, but again, just surging in much heavier rain. So I see this little spot right here over the Cayman Islands, over the Bay of Campeche as well. There's also this uh, cyclonic twist as well to be monitoring. It's, it's all broad, there's nothing that's very tight, but again, over those last couple of frames here, and again, this is not too far out in time, really. This is less than a week out here as we get towards the 11th. Uh, again, that's just gonna be next, uh, what is that, next Tuesday, right? So again, you just, again, it's not too far out in time to be discussing about what this is trying to do here. And I can tell you the GFS, and even the European model tries to bring a surge of rain back into the southern sides of Florida. So just making things overall much wetter. When we look at the surface winds, let's do that. We're gonna look at the surface winds. So again, few things to note here. When I broaden this out, fresh winds the next few days through portions of the Eastern and the Central Caribbean. But these winds will begin to relax a little bit, allowing the wind shear overall to begin to relax a little bit, okay? And as this loops up again, do we see anything extremely tight in this area? No, but again, it bears watching, especially that we're going to be into early June. I do expect a lot of wind energy here where we could have some, you know, very blustery conditions as these storms begin to move in. But again, just letting this load up all the way until the 11th here, it's just gonna take one more or two frames. A lot of data here that I'm showing you at this present time. Where you see the purples, by the way, those are your stronger winds, purples into your whites. And you can see this surge here moving over Cuba and into the Straits of Florida. So we'll be watching that for the Bahamas as well. Again, surge of tropical moisture, uh, if nothing else. So now let's talk about a couple of different things I wanna show you. You're looking at the GFS model pressure plots from the ensemble. So again, look into the Northwest Caribbean and you're gonna to start to see some L's on there. Now there's 50 different members of this ensemble, but again, I'm looking at how many of them are developing areas of low pressure and how strong they are. We can see some of that just off of the coast of Belize. We can see some of that near the Cayman Islands. And then towards the end of that plot, we can see some of that trying to drift over Cuba as well. Again, no hard signals as of yet. I'm gonna pause this and show you one frame from next Tuesday morning, where again, we have some of the ensemble members showing weak areas of low pressure, either in the Northwest Caribbean or in the Southwest Gulf of Mexico. I believe the lowest pressure is 999. Again, 
Does not mean that we're going to get a disturbance, okay? But the GFS model hints at that. Hurricane Center has nothing over the next seven days, but you guys can see already we have this broad twist. This is why I just have to focus in on this area and we'll watch it together over the next seven days. You can also see how there's going to be a confluence of wind coming in and a lot of energy because you have waves in the Eastern Pacific that are in the double digits that are slamming into the Pacific coastline of Mexico and Central America where we have easterlies here. And obviously there's gonna be a confluence right over Central America when you have that. The wave action is going to be weaker throughout the Caribbean, but also not not existent as well, and we're going to stay with basically the eastern direction to all of that. Okay, let's get into the total amount of rain. Like I said, I've got a lot here in my rundown. So we're going to be looking at the GFS model total amounts of rain. Now again, I want to be clear, in this area, I believe it to be too dry. Even that being said, we have some spots of over two inches of rain or more, and I hope this is going to let me plot more than one at a time. You know, sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't cooperate. And it, let's see here, I'm hoping. No, it's not gonna let me do it. All right, well, you know what? We're just gonna do this. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more and then I'm just gonna move my cursor around. If it's not going to stay, oh, there we go. Just had to zoom in a little bit. But you get the idea. I don't think this is enough rain for what we've already been seeing. You could get an inch or two of rain like that in one afternoon. So GFS model, in my opinion, too dry, Puerto Rico, Virgin Islands, not a lot of rain for the Leeward Islands the next several days. Even again in Hispaniola, where we have some spots, two and a half plus, right? Probably underdoing it overall, okay? Look at all these, look at these hefty rainfall totals for Cuba. Portions of uh, the Turks and the Caicos, back up into portions of uh, the Bahamas. And again, you're looking at several inches of rain. Now, I believe it is certainly on what could be happening in the northwest side of the Caribbean. Portions of the Cayman Islands, Grand Cayman, Georgetown, five inches of rain, not out of the question, okay? Huge surge of moisture coming in. We'll see how it plays out, but look at this through Central America. Now you're getting very high totals coming in. Not as much for Belize as of yet, but it's nice to see. I'm gonna show you the GFS model coming up as well. So kind of in your head, get a snapshot of what the GFS is showing, and we'll look at the European model coming up. But again, several inches of rain in this area. Even Cancun and Cozumel get onto the act where they have a little bit. But again, just zooming back into Belize, it's great to see, even towards San Ignacio and Belmopan, about an inch or more, with a couple of areas bracketed by more than two inches of rain. Again, this is over the next five plus days, but nothing more than that. And you can see that moisture, if I were to extend this out, this area of heavy rain is gonna be trying to move north and east on the GFS model. This is the European model. Guys, there's not a ton of difference. This is the European model over the next seven days. What I would point out, first of all, I'll come back on camera, is the, the European model is not as prolific with the rain through the Bahamas or the southern sides of Florida as of yet over the seven days. But again, look at all of this red. 75 millimeters or more, three inches of rain or more, and it's covered up in Belize, in Guatemala, in Honduras, in Nicaragua, in the Yucatan, and the Cayman Islands. A little bit drier towards Jamaica. More rain than the GFS, but a little bit drier. Again, this tropical wave is moving west, so we should be drying out from east to west here. But again, the European model in general over the next seven days is wet. Wet, wet, wet in the western side of the Caribbean, Central America, portions of the Bahamas as well. But again, that's a lot of rain in most spots. Now, the Leeward Islands, you guys are going to be hurting a little bit more. There's absolutely no doubt about it. You guys are going to be drying out. And as we mentioned, when you dry out, you get on the hotter side. Let's get back over to what's happening right now. All right, friends, I think we've spelled out the situation. We've got these really nasty storms right now in this area. Storms will continue for Hispaniola and Puerto Rico and Jamaica. We've got this broad circulation to be monitoring over the next week or so. But again, what's the benefit? The tropical moisture is bringing in the areas desperate for rain. You have a specific question about the forecast, drop it in the comments section below. I'd love to hear from you guys as well. Now, you know you can find us across all social media, not just here on YouTube. We're on Instagram, TikTok, X, Facebook. You want to send me a picture or video, that's mymediamundo at gmail.com. 
Friends, thanks for coming along for the ride. I appreciate you. Great to see you on this Wednesday. I'll keep you up to date. I'll be back with the latest tomorrow right here at Media Mundo.